Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in Durku, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed. All right, let's take a look at lesson 6.2.5. This is a, a lesson that has five word problems. And we're gonna spread it out over two days and make sure that we understand how to do this because this is the whole reason why we learn the 5D process and why we learn algebra, is where we can take a situation, take any kind of a problem, pull out the essential information, create a plan for how we're going to solve the problem and solve it and check our work to make sure everything is right and then declare our answer. So we'll take our time with this. Uh, the videos are going to end up being relatively short, uh, but you're going to be spending enough time hopefully working through it that it'll be the length of a normal, a normal lesson. So, engineers investigate practical problems to improve people's quality of life. To investigate solutions to problems, they often build models. These models can take various forms. For example, a structural engineer designing a bridge might build a small replica of the bridge. Civil engineers studying the traffic patterns in a city might create equations that model traffic flows into and out of the city at different times. In this lesson, you will build equations to model and solve problems based on known information. As you work today, keep the following questions in mind. What does the X represent in this situation, in this equation? How does the equation show the same information as the problem? And have I answered the question? All right. so. Uh, this I'm just going to go ahead and uh, paraphrase all of this for you. In essence, what they're telling you to do without actually telling you to do it is just work through the process using the 5D model. Okay? Describe what you got. Define the variables and the relationships between the variables. Do the problem as an equation. Check to make sure that your solution is correct and then declare your answer. And whether or not we really declare our answer in a sentence or using a few words, you know, as long as we can, we know exactly what the answer is stating, then it's it's generally good. And because these are word problems, you will have some sort of word attached to your to your answer. All right, so let's do problem A together. Then I will read out problem B for you, and then allow you the time you'll pause and and work through the process and then when you feel like you've got an answer and you feel good then i will reveal you'll unpause and we'll do the same thing for problem c and then we'll be done for today so only three problems today tomorrow will be the last two and if you are able to do all of this without any trouble at all you should be good to go for the chapter test and any kind of problem solving that we have to do for the rest of the year so uh, it says here that Hong Kong's tallest building, Two International Finance Center, is 88 stories tall. The former Sears Tower, I think it's now known as the Willits Tower, uh, in Chicago is eight stories taller than the Empire State Building in New York City. If all the buildings were stacked on top of each other, the combined heights would have 300 stories. So I'm going to highlight this part because it's... It's kind of, this is the question. How many stories does the Sears Tower have? So it's always a good idea. Once you've read through the problem to familiarize yourself with it, then make sure you know exactly what the question is that needs to be answered before you begin the 5D process, okay? So um, let's go back now and let's let's find out what we got. We got a Hong Kong. No, we it's not a Hong Kong, it's the tower in Hong Kong, which is called Two International Finance Center is 88 stories tall. All right. Now the former Sears Tower, let's highlight this in blue. The former Sears Tower in Chicago is eight stories taller than the Empire State Building. Okay, so it looks like the Sears Tower has been compared to the Empire State Building and then this two international finance center it's not even a variable they tell us how tall this one is so great that's 88 stories tall so when we go through and we describe this we have three different um we got three different towers 
And I think there's one more thing for me to highlight here is what is the total is 300 stories. So let's highlight that as well. All right, so let's start off. Well, let's start over here. We've got our three towers. You got your two international finance center, which they said was 88 stories tall. So I'm gonna just write that in there. This is kind of like in green is, is the defined portion, but I'm gonna show it again down here. The Sears Tower is being compared to the Empire State Building, and it says it is eight stories taller. So if the Empire State Building is X, this has to be X plus eight. And then they said the total is 300 stories tall. So that's all the information that we need. Now, this very first example, we are going, or I am going to set up the guess and check table, but I'm not technically going to use the table the way it was designed for guess and check. I'm going to do the defined portion because we've got three different variables, right? Stu International Finance Center is 88 stories tall. Sears Tower is, uh, or actually Empire State Building is X, and the Sears Tower is X plus 8. Now, normally, I would put the X first and then use that to start off and then go through the guess and check. But we are setting this up as an equation. So note here that the equation is made up of, here's your 88 for your two inter international finance center. Here's your X plus eight, that's your Sears Tower. And here's the height of the Empire State Building, X. And when you add all three of those together, you get 300 stories. So let's go ahead and simplify this expression. Let's combine like terms. So you got your two X's there, and then 88 plus eight gives you 2x plus 96. That has to equal 300. So working through the process for solving these equations, I want to know what the 2x's were equal to before I added the 96 in. So I'm going to take and subtract the 96 from both sides, which means I'm going to subtract it from the 300, and that means that our two x's have to be equal to 204, since 204 plus 96 equals 300. And now I'm gonna take that 204, and it says two times x is 204, so 204 divided by two will tell you what that x has to be equal to, and it's gonna be equal to 102. So, if I've done everything correctly, I should be able to take these numbers, say, okay, we know the 88 is what it is, we know that, or we think X is supposed to be 102, so Sears Tower would be 102 plus 8, which would be 110, and then Empire State Building is 102. So when you add all three of those numbers together, let's make sure 102 plus 110 plus 88, is that equal to 300? Yes, it is. So we have now decided, right, we checked it. We feel confident. Now what do we have to declare? We have to declare... How many stories does the Sears Tower have? So we are going to go to this piece of information right here and declare that as our answer. The answer is the Sears Tower is 110 stories tall. Okay. So do we need to have this table in there? No, not really. Um, I included the table in there just so you could have some familiarity with the fact that we've got three different variables all being added in together, um, and then the side portion was built into the table, but we don't really have to do it that way. We can just do everything here, take this information, here's the define portion in with the describe, then set it up as an equation, solve the equation, check, and then declare your answer. So that's what we've got here. No tables. I'm combining the describe and the define in one step, then we'll solve the equation, we'll check it, do the decide, and then once we've decided everything is great, then we're going to declare our answer. So, this is one for you to do from beginning to end. I will help you pull out the essential information. It says the Mackinac Bridge in Michigan is 1,158 meters long. Wonderful. That we do not have to worry about a variable at all. Then it says the Singma Bridge in Hong Kong is 97 meters longer than the Golden Gate Bridge. And the total, if you were to put all of them end to end, would be 3,815 meters. 
So uh, let's answer this final question. How long is the Singh Ma Bridge? So when we declare our answer, we're only going to declare the answer for the Singh Ma Bridge. All right, so how many different variables are there? You got your Mackinac Bridge, your Singh Ma Bridge, and your Golden Gate Bridge. What are their measurements or what are their relationships? Which one do you want to make the X? Go ahead and make a list here. Do your describe and then define each one of your variables. Then set it up as an equation, work through the equation, then come back over to here to your definitions and decide how long each bridge must be according to your definitions. Then add them together, see if it makes the total correct. If it does, you can declare your answer. Okay, so I'm gonna pause, you pause, and then when you are ready, unpause and I will do the reveals. But please, if you're gonna get this all on the test, you got to be you gotta do it on your own. Okay. So don't just wait and copy me down. Do it. And if you have to pause and make corrections, pause and make corrections. Totally fine. But if you do it and you get everything right and you've got the confidence moving forward, you know what to do. You know how to problem solve. Okay. So go ahead and take care of that. I'm gonna pause, you pause, unpause when you're ready. All right, let's see if you've got the same thing that I've got. Three different bridges, Mackinac Bridge, Singma, and Golden Gate Bridge. We know that the, the Mackinac is 1158, 1,158 meters long. We know that the uh, Singma is 97 meters longer than the Golden Gate Bridge, so we're going to make X our Golden Gate Bridge length. So Singma would be X plus 97, and the Mackinac is 1158. So when we set this up, Mackinac Bridge plus the Singma Bridge plus the Golden Gate Bridge is equal to 3,815 meters if you were to be able to put them all end to end. So we combine like terms, looks like we got two X's. And then when you add 1158 and 97, you get 1255. So 2X plus 1255 has to equal 3,815. Now, we've got to get our two X's alone. So let's subtract 1,255 from each side, and that gives you two X's must have been equal to 2,560, because when you add 1,255 and 2,560, you get 3,815. So now, what does X have to be? If two of them is equal to 2,560, what would one of them be? Take 2,560 divided by two, and you should get 1,280. So that's telling us how long the Golden Gate Bridge is. So if this is 1,280, this is 97 meters longer than that. So we're going to add the Mackinac Bridge to the Singma to the Golden Gate Bridge, right? Is this 97 more than that? Yes, it is. Use your calculator to make sure. When they add together, do we get 3,815? Yes, we do. So we know we've got the correct solution for the Golden Gate Bridge, and using our definitions, we should have the correct um, measurement for the Singma Bridge as well. So we had to declare for the Singma, so we'll say the Singma Bridge is 1,377 meters long. Okay, so hopefully you got all that correct. Hopefully you are recording everything in a neat way so that if I were to look at your work, I would know exactly how you got from here to here to here. I would see your check somewhere in there. It would make sense to me. And I would see you clearly declared your answer with a box around it. Okay, this is all essential for problem solving. Keeping yourself organized. I can't tell you the number of students I've taught over the years who struggled with math partly because they were so sloppy with their work and they could barely read their own handwriting. Take time to make this nice and neat and orderly, and you're going to be halfway there. Use your calculator, and you're going to be 95% of the way there. The rest of it is just understanding how, well, maybe my ratios are off a little bit. It's probably more than 5% necessary to know how to solve the equation. I'd say that's 50%, but whatever. Let's move on. I'm just rambling at this point. All right. Now... I'm going to let you read all of this and pull up information on your own, okay? 
I'll read this part. Elevations found in the United States range from California's Death Valley, which is 282 feet below sea level, to Alaska's Mount McKinley, which is also now known as Mount Denali, which is 20,320 feet above sea level. Wonderful. Okay, so a little bit of a geography uh, sort of a lesson here. Now we get into the nuts and bolts. This problem is about three states and their highest elevation. Go ahead and read through all of that. It's hard to see on the video. You can always go to the online book and read it out of the online book. Okay, so how many different variables are there? Do they give us any information for free or do we have to figure out all of it? Go ahead and write down your definitions, set up the equation, check your work, and then declare your answer. It does say how high is the highest elevation in each of the three states. So you're going to be giving e all three answers. Okay? Go ahead. This is the last problem we're working on today. Go ahead and work through that, and then we'll do the reveal after you get done. Please pause now. All right, so I did some highlighting here. If you are not done, you haven't paused yet, you should be pausing, okay? If you were just waiting strategically for me to highlight this to make it easier to do your describe and define, and now you want to get started on the process, good for you, good strategy. Uh, pause it and get to work. Otherwise, I'm going to start revealing now. Okay. So, what do we have here? We've got Delaware is 106 feet higher than the highest elevation in Florida, and Louisiana is 190 feet higher than the highest elevation in Florida. So, both of these are being compared to Florida. So, I'm going to make Florida my X. Delaware would be X plus 106, and Louisiana would be X plus 190. When you add all of them together, you get 1,331. So, let's take X plus 106, that's the Delaware highest elevation, plus X, which is the Florida, plus X plus 190, which is Louisiana, and add all those together by combining like terms, and you would get three X's plus 296 is equal to 1,331. So, working through the process now, let's remove balance sets, Taking away 296 from each side because we want to know what 300 or 3x was equal to before we added the 296. So 1331 minus 296, use your calculator, gives you 1035. So if 3x's are equal to 1035, what would 1x be equal to? Let's divide that by 3 and we get 345. So that means that the elevation, or I should say the highest elevation in Florida must be 345 feet above sea level. Delaware would be 106 more than that, so that would be 451. And Louisiana would be 190 more than that, so that would be 535. Add those three totals together, and you get our magic 1,331 for the total. So we are declaring our answer for all of them. Delaware was 451 feet. Florida has a highest elevation of 345 feet, and Louisiana has a high uh, uh, elevation of 535 feet. And that ends today. So go ahead and jump over to the homework. I believe I am going to do a check for understanding after tomorrow's lesson. Okay, so today just go do your homework. There will be there's bound to be some other problems like this. Make sure you understand how it works. We'll check our homework uh, the next day, tomorrow. Okay? All right. Take care. Bye. Hey, feeling good. Like I should.